And that's my view for the morning. I had, first off, let me apologize. This is my cell phone. Audio's not very good on it. This is the second day in a row I forgot SD cards for the camera and my phone scope. So I'm really crushing it so far. But I had an exceptional morning looking for deer. I keep thinking I'm gonna find that spot where there's just kind of that deer pretty much everywhere you put your binos. And it hasn't happened until this morning. A Couple really nice four points, nothing giant, but just finally like oh that's a good mature deer and so I found that but I think I found the area guys I've been really wanting to like just go really hardcore on this hunt I told Logie I said let's just load our packs up like we did in Montana and just set out wherever we end up we end up for like three or four days I think that's probably the best way to kill a big deer in this unit is just cover a ton of country get off the roads and just walk but this morning I just had this epiphany that uh it's not why I hunt I like to do that, it's enjoyable, but man, I'd like to enjoy my time with my loved ones, my friends, and my dad's really been wanting to go on this hunt, Gage has really been wanting to go on this hunt, and I gotta admit, there was, last week I was like, maybe you guys can't go this first weekend, because I just don't want to beat you up, you know, backpacking in, but, that's stupid. I'm gonna make this hunt enjoyable, not only for myself, but for me, my dad, my son. If I kill big deer, I kill big deer. If I don't kill big deer, big freaking deal. We have uh, just a little speck of time on this earth. And if we're not enjoying it with people we absolutely love the most, then there's no reason to be doing any of this. But yeah, I had a really good morning. I had some really uh, good alone time. It's been a while since I've been in the woods by myself. I always like to reflect when I am. I did. And it's gonna be a fun hunt. I'm so excited. Um, I'm gonna go and make a camp somewhere, camp out, because that's what I remember doing when I was a kid, is camping out the night before opening day and then waking up early in the morning cold and hiking my butt off with my dad. And we're gonna do that again. We're gonna do that again. We appreciate you guys sticking along. And uh, it feels like maybe, to me anyways, it feels like the season's winding down, but we're only just getting halfway through with this thing. And uh, I'm so excited for the hunts coming up, so. Beautiful morning. Good morning guys. Today is gonna be a day full of working, cleaning the house, and possibly meeting up with Jordan Harbison for lunch. The first thing I'm gonna go do is run down to Eagle Eye, our partners who do our shirts, our apparel, and they also ship our products on our website. So real quick, thank you to anyone and everyone who has purchased or is a customer of our website. We appreciate it so much. Seriously, you guys are blowing it out of the water. Never really thought that we could, you know, sell as much stuff with antlers on it and things like that as we have. So thank you guys. If you haven't visited our store, check it out. It's gethushin.com. We always have a link to our store in the description. It's Monday, October 8th. Let's get a fresh start to the a new week get a lot done I will be hunting on the 10th with outlaw Jared outlaw if you guys watch him on YouTube or social media great guy I fished with him in Florida and if you guys would like to see another collaboration fishing video with black tip H out in Florida put it in the description box give us some motivation to get back out there and hook up and fish together also another thing I forgot gas 62 miles is what it says I have until I'm out. Solid. I'm such an idiot. Luckily it's downhill, so if I run out I can coast most of the way. I need to get my stuff together. Here's the great gas mileage. Put 
them on the front tire of my truck. Got in and drove over them. Yep. Well, I guess we gotta try out the uh, Vortex VIP warranty. It's been a rough one, guys. <laughs> it's been a rough morning. Oh well. Worst things could happen. That close to running out of gas. Look at that. What up? What to do, ED? Hold on, hold on. <laughs> Dude. Look at this. <laughs> is this insane? <laughs> That's legit. So. What is it, No Shave October? This is uh, No Shave October and No Shave November. <laughs> Told my wife, hey, I love you, but I want to see how big I can get this thing at the end of November. So she That's gave me the green nuts. light. Jordan came to say what's up, visit me, came down to my neck of the woods. He's got his bowl. We're gonna check this out. All right, long story short, we're meeting up for lunch and swapping stories. Been able to see each other since the day, since the day you left Idaho. Just got back from Montana. Had a long, long trip out there. Long days, just like it was in Idaho. Lots of hikes. It's been tough this year, man. The elk rut's just been different. It has not been easy. Look at this. Oh. Oh, there he what? is! What? What a warrior! I yeah, love elk. Are elk. So cool. Look at this. Look at this guy's little character right here too. Oh yeah, like I have a. <laughs> he's the camp. Remember last year I hunted a whitetail. I had the candle drop buck. Yes. This is a candle this drop bull. Nice ivories. Really he's pretty got, ivories. He's got some really pretty ivories. We figured he's Dang. probably a six or seven year old bull. You guys How? understand the force that it takes to break an antler like that? I got into this guy three times before he gave me the slip. I called him in opening morning to 50 yards for Tyler, and Tyler was up to bat first, and he decided to pass on him. And mm -hmm. I was like, dude, I'm not passing on anything. <laughs> so as soon as he kind of said, hey, I'm passing, I was like, all right, so you cool if I shoot? That little exchange right there, mm -hmm. boom, bull busted. Not like enough he, time to. Not enough time, like it was like, it had to, he had to make the decision or else it was gone. So that was opening morning. We ended up doing where we pushed them out of their beds dropped him into this kind of funnel in this draw where I sat right at the pinch point and I ended up getting him to come through with his cows. He had like six cows of them and I cow called and stopped him at 40 yards broadside. Drew mm. back, cow called him, stopped him in his tracks, looked at me and I was just about to send it just like on our trip. He freaking busts. Oh. I'm like, are you At full draw. At full draw, finger At on the trigger. full draw, finger on the trigger, ready to send it. So I was thinking, man, how many more opportunities am I going to get out of this guy? That next morning, we glass him up. He was feeding in a field with his cows. We lost him for a second in the cedars. As soon as we came around this cedar, boom, there's Nicki Minaj's tush. <laughs> <laughs> a cow at like 35 yeah. yards. We're like, he's got to be in here. So I get all set up and I know he's going to come back around and keep feeding. Gets to 71 yards, broadside feeding, draw back, settle in, let her rip. Perfect shot. He started just like struggling. We thought, I thought he was going to tip over right in front of us. Unfortunately, short story, I'll shorten it for you guys. I got a call from one of the guys saying, dude, we looked glass down in that area. There's a tree with a ton of birds. So all of a sudden I get this excitement like, ah, oh, I'm going to get closure. I'm going to find my bull, get over to him. I see him. I'm totally jacked. I'm so excited. Look and walk up to him and he's already been like carved out. He's rotting. Oh, man. We look at for any salvageable meat that we can and there's nothing. And so I kind of had this mix of feelings where you're like, I'm so glad that I made a good shot, he did die. I did recover him, but the whole reason why I came here was for the meat, I didn't get any of it. It's hard, huh? It's one it of the sucks. hardest feelings It'll I've make ever... you wanna quit. It did, I was, I told David D. Austin when we were walking out, cause you know, I'm holding this guy on my head and I'm like, this is the most, like I feel like it's a walk of shame a little bit, like I feel shameful. Like I shot a great bowl, I had a great like opportunity and I hiked so hard and I hiked all over and I've got the proof of it on my onyx mats to track him we just couldn't find him it's weird weird feeling if you haven't been through it and if you're a new hunter when it comes I mean it's hard to explain but when if you are a new hunter or you haven't had that happen I'll, I'll promise you this it will most likely happen it's like the worst feeling but it's all you can do is do your best so you know that looking back you're like I tried you guys know me I love antlers I love elk so uh, putting these together is pretty fun so this is a uh, Montana bull, an Idaho bull, and a Utah bull. There they all are together, all three of them. Eric was talking about this, but as you kind of look down the, the tunnel, if you will, 
just the comparison of, of a 350-ish bowl here and a 380-plus bowl there. If mine was complete, might might be a 300-inch bowl. In my eyes, this is a true giant, and it all comes down to the spacing between the points, the length of the tines. A lot has to do with the main beam and the width. So you can see how tight this guy is. I think he's 32 inside. This one is 42 inside, yeah, 40, maybe 43. 42 on this guy, and he, this was 10 inches. 32, yeah, 32. so that, that takes what would be a 355 of antler to a 365 had he just been wider. So I'm not a huge fan of scoring the width myself. Most scoring systems score the inside spread, which is silly if you think about it, it's just air. It has nothing to do with how much bone is on their head. So something that's 40, three inches wide is going to be a 10 inch score difference just because of the air in between the next one I'm not a big fan of that but that's how most most scoring systems are i would i may be at fault for saying this but i think most people probably may have passed this guy up um simply because he's not finished he broke off on one side they want a full frame bowl funny thing about that so remember our movie when we hunted with adam weatherby yes opening morning perfect opportunity broken bowl after i think the third or maybe even the Royal. You guys might have seen the video, it's on our YouTube channel. We elected to pass, that that ended up being the best, the most mature, bull the biggest saw. bull we passed because it had a broken antler. And me and Adam had a funny conversation, like, isn't that kind of a silly w the reason to pass a bull because some of his antler is missing, it's missing. Like, big this, deal. This guy was the biggest bull on the mountain that I was hunting. <laughs> That's so cool, man. So Awesome bulls, great experiences, two archery bulls, one rifle bull. Yeah, let's I mean, pop those out. Yeah, should we show? Should we show the? Yeah, uh, should we show, show you guys the, a trick on how to life? pop these out? Do you, you, you guys do the, the wood and the hammer? No, no, that's way too difficult. What, what do you do? Chop them? They got a way, way more fish. Oh, these guys are, are trying to run a business, not them, just have fun. You know? I mean, I'll let them take out. I'll let them take out one side. I'll take out the other. All right. You're taking out one side. I'll take out one ivory. I am gonna challenge the champions of everything taxidermy. It's a bold move. All right, let's do this. Okay, I need a hammer. We got a battle of, what do we call on this? Who can remove the ivory the, the fastest and the cleanest? Fastest and so cleanest. So times, and it's basically, yeah, and I'm like, yeah, do you scratch it? Do you, is it? Is it clean without the gum meat and everything? So, Curtis versus me. Okay, Curtis Look, is- he's getting ready. Dude, he's getting all sharp. Game I on, just dude. went around the place, found some random, <laughs> random items, like a two by four and a hammer. <laughs> I meanwhile, meanwhile, the doctor over here's got his we scalpel. Got tools. Pliers. Seven. Scalpel. That's all we need. <laughs> That's all we need. <laughs> yeah. All right, I will be on the camera. So who's up How first? I want it started because I'm gonna have to have mine upside down. Okay, I'm ready. Three, two, one, go. Come on, baby. Come that's on. A, that's a scratch. Oh, I sure. just choked. I just choked. Ooh. 17.76. <laughs> Is that clean? What do we got, coach? I've got a little meat there, but that's just dried tissue. That's dried tissue. Let's that see. That's going to come off. Clean. Eric, you got an assessment? Scratch. Negative. Add five seconds to each scratch. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty good. I'm not going to lie. Good. That's good. <laughs> Okay, Eric. Could have been okay. quicker. All right. that, and you and if you had completed that twist, oh, man. you'd have been done yeah. in probably 13. What Curtis's time. Yeah, time right 16.76 is what okay. Eric's gotta be. Okay. Gotta be. No ready? deductions either. No deductions. That's the final score for Curtis. Okay, you ready? Alright, hold on now. Reset. Three, two, one, go. This is oh, what's going on here? I gotta watch out. I'm gonna Oh, it's too dry for this. Oh. <laughs> oh, what? Oh, he's still got time. Come on, baby. Come on. Still got time. <laughs> Boom. Oh. oh, Curtis got gotcha. you. On time. On time. Cleanliness. Cleanliness. Oh. Cleanliness and not a scratch. Look at that's that. Phenomenal. If it was that's fresh, they pop right out. That thing yeah, was dry. I agree. If it's fresh, I'd have that. That was close. So I, I don't know. Is that do we have to go to like a sudden death? How do we how do we square this up? Ooh. He Curtis won on time. You won on. I mean, that is pretty good. But man, I think I got gypped here. Look at this. I mean, that's like dry tissue that wasn't going hey, to come off no matter what. Hey, I had to deal no with the dry what. tissue. <laughs> Not uh, a scratch. I think if you'd have done my size, <laughs> it would have been different. 
side. That's pretty good. What All I could think? say is you both are legends, and What's you both got them out really fast, <laughs> faster than I could. We'll let, we'll leave it to the people. Okay, so What's you guys vote? comment below. Oh, dude, come on, flip the comment around. below. Who do you think? <laughs> who do you got? Give Curtis his best side. Okay, Curtis or Eric, who do you think won? You guys decide. Comment below. Well, guys, it is uh, winding down on October 8th. I uh, made it home from Seattle. A little tired after the old football game. Tough loss by the Seahawks, but we had a great time. And I uh, just wanted to say a special thanks to Black Fowl Outdoors. I appreciate you stopping my wife and I when we were walking into the game and uh, having a chance to talk a little bit. If you guys are on Instagram, go search Black Fowl, like waterfowl, outdoors. Give them a follow. He's got a really cool passion project of introducing inner city youth uh, of Seattle in particular to the outdoors, hunting, fishing, camping, just kind of showing them a different way of life, a different um, opportunity maybe for uh, things to do that they may not be the most exposed to. So it was great to chat with him. Let's uh, give you a little look at some goodies we're working with. So I just had a chance to go pick up the uh, new Weatherby. These are the Chamberlain 257 Weatherby. And this is in the Vanguard model. Also dipped in the First Light Fusion. These are very, very pretty. Wow, they sure turned out super good. Ironically enough, Casey, Eric, and myself all went with the 257 Weatherby. Just another super fast shooting Weatherby caliber like they're what they're known for. We all went with the fusion dipped stocks and then the uh, kind of cool accented Cerakote barrels. Casey's already had his, so he was able to take his and use it on the antelope hunt. Eric and I just got ours. And so we will be spending time at the range, getting the Vortex scopes mounted on there. We get a lot of questions as well. What scope do you guys use? And I don't know if I have one right here with me, but we use the Vortex Viper which is the HSLR model. We've been using those exclusively for I think the last four years. And so far they've been great. Not overly complicated. We use the turret system as well. So uh, what I've done typically is put my zero at 300 yards and then I'll dial for additional yardage if I need to. Basically just go to any ballistics calculator, put in all the goodies, and then uh, I'll create like a little card I take with me hunting and also put it on my phone. So if I happen to lose the card, I've got a backup. And yeah, then you just, beyond 300 yards, just use the old dial. If you're interested in finding like more specifics out on some of that stuff, we have some cool old videos in our library right here on the channel where Mark Thompson from Thompson Long Range goes through pretty explicit details on how to like set up a scope and some of the basics of long range shooting. His school is really incredible and uh, Mark and Scott, his son, are extremely knowledgeable guys when it comes to putting together Weatherby rifles and uh, shooting, you name it, you guys are some of the best. There's the ammo that we're going to be shooting, which these are going to be the uh, Na Nosler Acubond in 110 grain for that 257. It's a sweet shooting rifle for pronghorn, whitetail, mule deer, and I know the three of us are excited to get out there and get some bullets down range. So if you've been watching along this far, you may be thinking to yourself, man, where the, why are they not all hunting together? Like Casey and BMAC have been doing stuff over here. Eric's been hunting with other people over here. In order for us to accomplish the task of this project, which was to film our entire season, the goal was to try to go on as many different hunts as we could. We started out together in um, Utah at our high country deer camp, which was fantastic. And then from that point, we've kind of split up. We haven't been on really any hunts as a group yet. So, and we're not gonna reconvene until we see each other in Kansas. That is coming up here in the next few weeks. So we're really, really excited about that because we just haven't had the crew together. <laughs> Good afternoon, guys. 
still October the 8th, and we are headed back to the gun range. We are gonna go uh, shoot the three, the six and a half 300 one more time. We were shooting just perfect the other day, me and Logan both shot under half inch groups at 100 yards, but they were both right a little bit, but the wind was rip roaring, so I wanna shoot it twice at 100 or three times, because you guys let me know earlier that two shots is not a group, it's a pair. If I have to, I'll click it over to the left, and then we'll shoot at 300 and see how she's doing. And I got a bag of penny candy, guys. I've, uh, I'm not gonna lie, I've kind of fallen off the no carbs wagon in the last few days. But uh, just, I'm, I'm carb loading for the hunt, is what I'm doing. But this is a peak lemonade to Tutti Fruity, one of my favorite. That's the goodness, it goes in here. And I got a whole bag for 99 cents. You like coming to the range? Yeah. Let's talk about it. I came here, I think, two weeks ago. And I shot Brady's gun. How'd you do? What? How'd you do? I shot one right in the middle, one a little bit right, and then one to the bottom left. Nice. The 300 yard one's taken up, so I'm gonna shoot 200 and see. All right, so like I said on the way here, it was shooting super tight groups, but it was just like, what do you, would you say, a half inch, right? Yeah. Half inch right at 100. First shot, right on, three, three and a half inches, right? So instead of shooting a group, I'm just gonna move it over two clicks, which would be a half inch at 100 yards, and uh, shoot two more and see where we're at. So, <laughs> just so you guys know, that's what we're doing. All right, so that was quick. I shot, the first shot, it was a, it was an inch or three inches right, Logan thinks. Moved it two clicks, shot again. It was a little bit lower, but uh, I was about an inch off the orange. So I moved it one more click, shot bullseye, shot again a little low and a little right, about an inch and a half, shot again another bullseye. So I think three shot group after I moved it about an inch and a half, 200. I'll take that every day, all day. That six and a half is 300, whether it's always shot, lights out. Here we go. 200 yard group after we adjusted it. Right there, pretty good shooting. How do we do? Orange? Dude, nailed it. Well, it's been a long day. Ready to eat a good, good dinner. Let me show you what we got. Potatoes, some fajita mix. Uh, green pepper, red pepper, and onion. We let those cook for a minute, then threw the potatoes on top. This is the Camp Chef cast iron skillet. And this is some of the tenderloin we've had marinating now for just about 20 hours. I'm gonna get the pan nice and hot first, and then just cook it real quick. It's steak and potatoes, followed by some ice cream. I feel like a milkshake or something after. Bridget says yes. This is why we hunt, you know, to eat, eat the good fresh meat. And here's a perfect example of having a nice healthy home cooked meal off a bowl that I harvested just days ago. Got three pieces. They're not super thick, so they're gonna cook pretty quick. Matter of fact, I'm gonna just get those real quick. That's dinner. Mm-hmm. Pretty good? Mm-hmm. All right, guys, that's it for me. Hope you guys enjoyed everything that we had today and seeing some of the bulls that we got. So hope you guys enjoyed it. That's it for my section. Bridget and I are going to grub, go get some dessert, eat ice cream. That's what's up.